my name's Dr. Thomas Tu. Uh, I was born in Adelaide, South Australia. And, and while I'm ethnically Chinese, uh, my parents and my family are from Vietnam. Uh, uh, and they settled here in Australia in the 80s, having escaped the, the Vietnam War. So currently I'm a scientist specializing in research of hepatitis B. Uh, I lead a research group at the Westmead Institute for Medical Research uh, in Sydney, Australia. So I first got diagnosed when I was about 14, just a routine blood test because my family comes from a high prevalence country, uh, so Vietnam, where chronic hep B affects maybe about 20% of the population. And in countries such a, with, with such high levels, people usually get hep B from little scratches during childhood or during birth if they're not vaccinated. Many people with hepatitis B, the problem is they won't feel sick, but underneath the liver is being damaged. So there's a big push to test people who may have got it without knowing and, and through no fault of their own. And so if we catch it early, we can stop a lot of the liver disease that occurs over time. Uh, and, and that's what happened with me. And, and I'm really thankful uh, uh, to be able to be diagnosed so early. Uh, at the same time, I didn't know what it meant. I wasn't provided with much information. I think I was meant to be getting regular blood tests, but, but no one reminded me or, or no one followed up. Um, and that's be because I was probably in this low risk immune tolerance phase. I mean, with my family, I didn't really talk about it. We, we didn't really talk about it because it wasn't causing any problems uh, uh, that, that we could see. And we sort of didn't want to raise it as something that sets us apart from the society that had accepted our, our family as, as refugees to, to Australia. I more or less dismissed it and, and stored the, the, the diagnosis in the back of my head and, and, and really sort of forgot about it. And it wasn't until later during the time I was trying to sort out what I wanted to do for university, did I start thinking about it again. But as I progressed, I found out the university where uh, I was attending, so University of Adelaide, there was one of the few active hepatitis B research labs in Australia. So from about second year onwards, I was really focused on, on getting into that lab. I saw that I had the potential to, to change things. And I mean, that, that diagnosis that I got came back to the forefront of my mind. I'm on treatment. Uh, that's just one pill a day. Um, and every three to six months, I have blood tests. I visit my hepatologist every six months just to check that everything's okay. It's very hard. Um, I just put these events in my calendar. And I, I will say that monitoring is very important because you want to pick up any changes in your body before it's too late to treat. These tests are, are very easy, just taking blood or, you know, having an ultrasound, which is, you know, like testing the baby. Uh, <laughs> So, so not really invasive stuff. It doesn't hurt. Um, and, and really I feel much less anxious because I know I can do something to take control of my condition and it, it doesn't control me. Early on in my career, during my PhD, um, I went to a party and met a girl and she asked me what I was researching or, or do, uh, what I did for a job and I said research scientists and and you know what are you researching I said hepatitis B she didn't know much about it and and so it asked me why I was working on it and and I said oh it, it's uh, quite prevalent in my community and and my family and so she asked me directly do you have hepatitis B and so at this point you know I have to really think and make a judgment of, about how this person is going to react. So my parents came from Vietnam, and, and, and as I said before, and have al always raised me to, you know, not make waves and, and put your head down, work hard, no politics, don't 
share anything too personal about yourself because it can come back to, to you know, bite you. Um, so, so I'm, you know, just thinking, what are the consequences of, of my response? Is she going to respect my honesty? Is she going to refuse to go out on a date with me? Uh, will it somehow be notified to the authorities and my family be thrown out of the country? You, you know, I know now that that won't happen. Those, those were all fears that, that I had. Um, but in the end, I chose honesty. I told her that, yeah, I have hepatitis B. Um, and indeed, we're, we're now about to celebrate our six year wedding anniversary. So that interaction worked out well. <laughs> um, um, but it just goes to show you how much anxiety and fear there is behind every sort of social interaction involving Hep B. Hep B in Chinese communities is quite common, but I don't think it's really talked about so much. I think there's a lot of stigma associated uh, associated with it, either you know from their uh, home country and bringing that that fear of discrimination in, where you know in their home country that they, they might feel really uh, that they have fewer opportunities if if they come out publicly and, and talk about it. Uh, or it may be due to interactions as being here as, an, as a migrant um, and, and not wanting to make a, a target of yourself. Like not knowing what hepatitis B is, and that's prevalent in, in all communities. People either don't know what it is at all or only think about it as a sexually transmitted disease. And uh, for people from more conservative cultures, such as the Chinese, this can be shameful and, and harder to talk about. The, the fact that the majority of, of chronic infections are actually caused by, by vertical transmission, um, you know, when the mother infects a newborn during, during birth or, or during childhood, it, that, that too is, is sort of associated with guilt and shame and, and, and stigma. So it's just a lot of complexity and a lot of issues that intersect with the cultures that are really difficult to untangle them all. That even, even doesn't take into account uh, language barriers at, at times. People usually get this uh, due to no fault of their own when, when they're just children. It's not fair to judge people based on the health condition that they don't have any control over. So it's, you know, just get tested, get it sorted out earlier rather than later. I want to address the first major myth or, or misconception that we see. Uh, that is Hepatitis B is not the end of the world for someone. The majority of people with Hepatitis B live completely, perfectly normal lives apart from, you know, monitoring once uh, or twice a year, you know. I think the biggest thing as well is that if you have Hepatitis B, you're not alone. There are 300 million people around the world with Hep B and, and they're all going through a lot of the same things that you are. And the third one is visit hepbcommunity.org. We, we have a community there of people who have Hep B, who've been through these sort of things who you can talk to. You don't have to release your name or anything. It's, it's anonymous. So it's easy to sort of um, um, interact with people comfortably and in the comfort of your own home. It's all online, it's all free. Uh, so please, I hope you can come.